Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. I hope everyone's having a wonderful holiday so far. Uh, for those of you that celebrate the 4th of July, happy July 4th. For those of you that, for whatever reason, you don't celebrate the 4th, happy holiday to you anyway. Now, I'm here in Troy, Alabama. I'm at the Centennial Park, and I do got a little bit of footage of the park along with a little bit of history if you would like to see that real quick i'll show you that real quick and then we're going to get on with what today's video is going to be about All right, folks, I just wanted to pay some respect to our fallen comrades. Hopefully you guys were able to read everything okay. Hopefully you were able to see the views of the park okay. Now we're going to get to what the video is about. And the video is going to be about, rather or rather not, you should prepare for homelessness. I mean, there's been a lot of you that have been into your feelings about this topic despite the information that I provided you guys, despite the data, despite the examples I gave you, despite even my own story, despite what's going on around you. I mean, there's a lot of you guys that still wanna accuse me of fear mongering. You still wanna accuse me of being negative. You wanna accuse me of encouraging laziness. I mean, some of you guys even went as far as calling me fat because I simply, I'm simply discussing an issue that is very much an issue here in the United States. But it's all right, though. So for those of you that don't want to prepare for homelessness because the thought of potentially being homeless is so painful that you don't even want to think about, you don't even want to prepare, okay, whatever. But I want you guys to ask yourself these questions. And these questions, these questions are in no particular order. Question number one. How much money do you earn per year? How much money do you earn per year? Now, for those of you that say that you make six figures a year, or between you and your significant other as a household, you make six figures a year, okay, congratulations. Now my next question is, where in what region of the country do you reside? Do you live in the Midwest? Do you live in the South? Do you live out West? Do you live Northeast? Now, I would say if you're, even if you're earning six figures, if you're living somewhere more expensive, like the Northeast or the West Coast or Florida, I would say, despite you making a six-figure income, I would say, yes, you should at least prepare for homelessness. Not that you're going to become homeless. You may never become homeless, and hopefully you don't. But for your sake, it would be good for you to prepare for that. And by the way, when I talk about preparing for homelessness, I'm also talking, you might live in one region of, of your state. Like, let's say you live in... Uh, South Georgia. You love South Georgia. Your house might even be paid off in South Georgia. All your family in South Georgia. But 
you're still not in a position to where you can just quit working and live the rest of your life and be good. You still have to work. So with that being said, if you lose your job in South Georgia and it's been, let's say, you know, three, four, five, six months, you have not been able to find work, you're gonna have to do something about that. So what do you do? Well, if you're lucky, you might be able to find something in North Georgia. Now, North Georgia has a much larger economy than South Georgia because in North Georgia, your cities are bigger and it's just, you know, it's just a much bigger and better economy in North Georgia. So you might just, so you might be, so you might have to go into North Georgia for work. So how do you do that? I mean, you don't want to leave South Georgia. Well, you know, what you do is whatever vehicle that you own, you grab some bare essentials that you have set aside for homelessness. You pack it up in your vehicle and then you drive up to North Georgia. And during your work week, you camp out in North Georgia. If, I mean, if your job permits it, you might be able to stay in the park. You might be able to sleep in, in the parking lot. If not, then you might, you know, uh, you can find the closest truck stop like Love's or Flying J. Or maybe you might be able to sleep at a Walmart if the Walmart allows it. I think you guys get the idea. And during the work week, that's where you stay. That's where you live. And then on your days off, you go back home to your house in South Georgia. And you repeat that week after week after week until things in South Georgia get better to where you're able to find work and stay in South Georgia. Now, for those of you that got children, you got a family, you're going to have to work it out amongst yourselves. I don't have no kids. I don't have no family, so I'm not going to speak on that. I'm just talking in general here. But my attitude is, if, if you have some sort of plan and, you, and you've done some sort of preparation, it may not be perfect, but some type of preparation is better than no preparation at all. So let's continue. Do you have a million dollars or better worth of liquid assets? I said, notice, I said liquid. I didn't say real estate. I didn't say crypto. I didn't say silver. I said liquid. Liquid means cash. For those of you that don't know what liquid means. Do you have over a million dollars of liquid assets? And again, I mean, for, well, for starters, if you don't, I would say, yes, you need to have some type of preparation done for homelessness. If you have under a million dollars of liquid assets, you need to prepare for homelessness. And again, it's not that you're gonna ever become homeless, it's just that if you're prepared to, if you're prepared, when the worst happens, you're prepared. Because my philosophy on this channel is, think the best, but prepare for the worst. And what could be worse than being homeless next to maybe uh, a health crisis or death? And let's say you do have a million dollars of liquid assets. And you're making six figures or better per year. Again, if you're living, let's say, in a region of the country that's more expensive, like Florida, the Northeast, the West Coast, or even out West anymore, I would say, despite the money that you're, you're earning, I would say, despite the fact that you might have over a million dollars of assets, I was still, in your case, prepared for homelessness. Now, for those of you that have a family, I, I would say if you have a family, a million dollars in assets may not be enough to float you and your family for a real long period of time especially if you live in a more expensive region of the country or you happen to have a child that have some type of long-term lifelong disability 
that you have to regularly treat for. And here's another question. Are you currently living paycheck to paycheck? If, the, if you're living check to check, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you live, I don't care what occupation you do, I don't care what you think you're gonna do. If you're currently today, as you listen to this video, live check to check, you need to be preparing for homelessness. Now, if you lose your job today, if you're not 250% sure that you can live the rest of your life and sustain the lifestyle that you currently live today, you can live the rest of your life the way you live today without ever without ever ever having to work at a job without having to have your own business or any of that kind of stuff if you feel that you're in a position to where you can live like that then okay maybe you might not have to worry about homelessness but if you're not in that position if you're not that confident then I would say prepare for homelessness And I would say if you have any type of health condition, like, you know, maybe you're diabetic or you got some other kind of health condition to where you spend a considerable amount of money on medication, again, prepare for homelessness. As I've said before and I'll say it again, most of us, myself included, are only one major health condition away from potentially facing homelessness. It's a scary concept and I hate to think about it myself, but it's, it's reality though, unfortunately. Most of us are only one major health condition away from homelessness. And uh, I was reading a comment from uh, one of my videos that I put out, like my, my first video that I put out, uh, everyone should prepare for homelessness. There is a person that put a comment in the comment section and they happen to be a nurse here in the state of Alabama. And I got to thinking, you know, I I also used to work at a nursing at nursing homes. I, I used to work as a CNA. And as a CNA, I can't tell you how many times that residents come in and you know shortly after they get in you have the you know you have i forget what they call them but a lot of times shortly after the resident gets admitted to their room you know you have the social worker that will go into their room and you know oftentimes that resident will have to fill out all kind of paperwork now i can't tell you to the t what that what those papers might be because it varies from person to person but to make a long story short and this is something that this commenter who's a nurse here in alabama pointed out and it's very and it's so very true unfortunately that unless you have unless that resident has enough money to where they can cover all their expenses uh at whatever nursing facility that they're admitted to uh guess what they're gonna be having to do they're gonna have to basically sign over all their assets to the nursing home or sign all their assets over to the government if they're receiving some type of government aid in order to be able to stay in the nursing home so what does that mean that means whatever they may have left whatever they may have left in the will for their children well guess what their kids ain't getting all that the government or the nursing home is going to get all that. I mean, they're going to have to, if, if they own their house and they worked all their life and paid off their house, guess what? They're going to have to sign that stuff over to the government or sign it over to the nursing home. Whatever money they have in liquid, guess what? All that shit is going to be gone too. 
And, and what's, what's sad and at the same time frustrating about what we have going on here in the United States is, I mean, for those of you that never been to a nursing home or never worked at a nursing home, I'm going to tell you straight up, and, you know, this is from experience of working at a nursing home. Most nursing homes that I, I ever been to, the food is, the, the food is, subpar at best the food that many of these facility facilities serve is subpar at best and a lot of times many of the nursing homes tend to run on a skeleton staff you know there's almost never enough cnas there's almost never enough charged nurses and the charged nurses are the ones that go down the hall and give out medications and things of that nature but you know in most cases, you never got enough CNAs, you never got enough nurses. And of the CNAs and the nurses that are there, a lot of times they get treated like crap by the, the higher ups. And it just makes for a hostile work environment. And the staff there may not mean to do it, but some of that negativity does rub off into how they treat some of these patients. And I say all this to say, I, I mean, I say all this because for those of you that think I'm just sitting here fear mongering and being negative, I'm not. I'm just being realistic. And I'm just trying to let you guys know that at the end of the day, if you're not prepared, if, if you and your family are not prepared for the worst, uh, unfortunately, nobody is going to have your back. And I mean nobody. And if you and if you're in a position to where you have to send your loved one to a nursing home, again, whatever assets that they may have left for you, you can kiss all that shit goodbye. And so yeah, I mean, I don't know, I mean, at this particular moment. I can't think of anything more to add to the video. Hopefully you guys understand where I come from. I know some of you are going to still accuse me of fear mongering and all that other kind of nonsense. Whatever it is, what it is. And I understand that there's a lot of you that rather have your head in the sand than to face the reality of what's going on out here. I, and many of you are aware of the new law that was passed about a week ago by the Supreme Court enabling local jurisdictions to criminalize homelessness if they want to, which I think is a screwed up law because it doesn't really provide any long-term solutions to put a dent in homelessness. And if you wanna know how I feel about all that, uh, I made a video, I wanna say about a couple of days ago addressing that. I forgot what the title was, but just go on this channel and look for the video that I put out, I want to say two days ago, and that video will address it. So that's all I got to say. I can't think of anything at, the, at this particular moment. So again, everybody have a wonderful uh, holiday. Or for those of you that celebrate the 4th, have a wonderful 4th. Uh, stay safe. Stay blessed, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Alright folks, I just got done doing my video and walking around the park. Uh, got my little dose of vitamin D in for the, for the time being. And I just wanted to explain that picture that you saw just a second ago. That picture that I posted was a picture of a homeless person. I ran into this individual right when I was on my way out of the park. Now, I was wanting to get this story on this channel, but they did not want to be recorded. So I honor their wishes. Now... Uh, I, I decided to go to Burger King and, and buy this individual a meal 
and plus I gave them a few things of water because it's hot as crap out here and this person told me that they were hungry so that's what I did but I decided to show you that picture just to, just to bring home how bad the homeless issue is here in the United States for those of you that still want to keep your head in the sand about the homeless issue in the in the United States. I mean, I came here to the memorial, to the bicentennial park here in Shore to to do a quick video, and ironically, I run into a person who's homeless. So I just wanted y'all to see that. All right, you know, again, stay blessed. Catch you guys on the next one.